Hi everybody, Justin here from chemistrynotes.com and this is our third video on section 9. So uh, the first two videos, S9E1 and S9E2, we've talked about the localized electron model, um, different types of hybridization and hybrid orbitals. We've also uh, discussed sigma bonds and pi bonds. So we didn't do we we did quite a few uh, sample problems, but today today's video I just want to do four practice problems on hybridization and hybrid orbitals. So I got four problems, and they each start at the top of their own new page of notes. So let's go over these four examples and help to make uh, they'll help us make sense of the first two videos of this section, section nine. So the first example says, completely describe the bonding in NH3. And again, this is all referring to the localized electron model hybridization. Well, I've quickly taken NH3 and drawn its Lewis structure, its shape, and its molecular geometry. Now, I'm not saying that's a quick thing to do. There is a process, and there's five rules for drawing Lewis structures, but we've already gone over that. Okay, that's not the topic of this video. So when you look at the shape of NH3, you see that there are four effective pairs around nitrogen. Three hydrogens and one lone pair. For effective pairs, we need to adopt sp3 hybridization. Okay, We have to have four identical hybrid orbitals, so we have the sp3 orbitals. Okay, I'm now drawing those sp3 lobes, or sp3 orbitals, Okay, and in between the, well, and then I've got the, the circles are the uh, hydrogen 1s atomic orbitals, so I'm labeling those. And then where the, where the spherical 1s orbital um, intersects, the sp3 lobe is where I've drawn my two electrons that make the bond. And then you see up above, I've got my lone pair resting in its own sp3 orbital. All right, so the 1s orbitals for the circles, if you will, those are hydrogen's 1s atomic orbitals. Nitrogen has four sp3 orbitals, and one of those sp3 orbitals contains the lone pair. Second example, um, this one wants us to do not NH3 this time, but NH2. Completely describe the bonding in NH2. I'm sorry, N2. Completely describe the bonding in N2. Okay, this is a nitrogen molecule. So nitrogen, N2, 10 valence electrons. You apply the five rules of how to draw Lewis structures, and you end up with a nitrogen-nitrogen triple bond with a lone pair on each nitrogen on the outside. Okay, this was all covered in section eight, chemical bonding. So it is a molecular geometry of linear. There is no true central atom. Each nitrogen is effectively identical to the other one. And each nitrogen has two effective pairs. Each nitrogen has a triple bond to an N and a lone pair. That's two effective pairs, right? The triple bond just counts as one connection to nitrogen. So watch, look at me. We have two effective pairs. That's an SP hybridization. See how that works? The last one was four pairs. S, P1, P2, P3. So that's how that works. All right, so each nitrogen has two effective pairs, which requires sp hybridization. Okay, so nitrogen, I'm going to draw the sp orbitals kind of in an internuclear uh, line like so. So where the nitrogen sps cross over, that is my sp, um, s, my sp, sp sigma bond. And then the other SPs on the outside of the nitrogens, those are where my lone pairs are. Okay, now if I have two effective pairs and I have SP hybridization, that means I have two P orbitals unused or left over. So each nitrogen has two, two P orbitals, and we can use each of those. You see I've got the two dark, darker dumbbells, the darker two Ps are making a pi bond and then the two lighter shaded 2p orbitals, which are perpendicular to the darker shaded p orbitals, those are making the triple bond, okay? So a triple bond contains one sigma bond because there's two sp orbitals and two pi bonds. 
So a double bond is a sigma bond in a pi bond. A triple bond is a sigma bond in two pi bonds, okay? Each nitrogen has two leftover p orbitals because it was sp, okay? So two of the p orbitals were never used. Third example, what's, this is the top of page three of our notes, third example. What's the hybridization of each iodine atom in the ion I3 minus? So what's the hybridization of each iodine atom in the following anion I3 minus? Now I3 minus looks nice and simple, but the Lewis structure, and I remember we did this specific Lewis structure for I3 minus in section eight, uh, it actually has a trigonal bipyramidal arrangement around its uh, central atom. It's got five effective pairs. So if we can get the Lewis structure, we can certainly answer this question, okay? So I3 minus 22 valence electrons, if you go through the process, you end up with an I dash I dash I kind of in a line, but then the iodine in the middle, the central atom has three lone pairs around it. Iodine's group is period three or lower. It can have an expanded octet. That's the Lewis structure. We've gone over this specific example before. I just wanted to show you the final Lewis structure here is as such. Now, how am I just pointing arrows and coming up with the hybridization? Well, look at the iodine on the far left. The iodine on the far left has four effective pairs. It has three lone pairs and a bond. Watch my hand. S, P1, P2, P3, four effective pairs. The iodine on the far right has four effective pairs. It's got a bond and then three lone pairs. That's four effective pairs. Watch my hand. S, P1, P2, P3. Iodine in the middle has three lone pairs and then two bonds. That's five effective pairs. Five effective pairs. See my hand here? I'm gonna go around. S, P1, P2, P3, D. So it's S, P3, D, or as we call it, D, S, P3. So if you're just told to identify the hybridization, you simply have to remember that saying, S, P1, P2, P3, D1, D2, okay? All right, so this is our fourth example um, of our kind of our practice problem video, if you will. And it says, for each of the following molecules or ions, predict the hybridization of each atom. So if I have the proper Lewis structure, I can predict the hybridization of each atom. We just did that with I3 minus. And then we're told to completely describe the molecular structure. Okay, so I've got three examples. I've got an A, a B, and a C. First example is XEF2. Second is CO, that's carbon monoxide. It wouldn't be cobalt, right? It's got a large O there, it's carbon monoxide. And then the third one, BF4 minus. So A, XEF2, 22 valence electrons. The little arrows there means I'm going through the process of how to draw the Lewis structure properly. I don't just throw an XEF2 together, satisfy octets. I gotta have 22 valence electrons and there are rules. Okay, so I end up with the exact same formation I had for I3 minus, really. So the F on the outside has four effective pairs, S, P1, P2, P3, right? The XE in the middle has five effective pairs. So if you look at my hand here, five would be S, P1, P2, P3, D. And then I write the D first, D, S, P3. The F on the far right is the same as the F on the far left, S, P3 hybridization. All right, B. B is carbon monoxide, CO. If you go through the process of writing its Lewis structure properly, you end up with carbon triple bond oxygen. So carbon has two effective pairs around it. It's got a, it's, so it's gonna be SP. Carbon has the lone pair, one, and the triple bond oxygen, a second effective connection, okay? So it's gonna be SP. And then the oxygen is the exact same, two effective pairs around it, SP, all right? So uh, C carbon, or CO is just like N2, right? All right, so how would we draw or completely describe the molecular structure? We forgot to do that one in A, but in B here, uh, the sp orbitals, well, we're going to use the sp orbitals of the carbon and the oxygen to make that sigma bond. Sigma bond is the, it's the internuclear or on a line 
quote, on a line in between the carbon and the oxygen. That's my sigma bond. And then each, the carbon and the oxygen, because they are sp uh, hybridized instead of sp3, they're sp hybridized, meaning they got two atomic orbitals that they never used. So each of those is going to have a kind of a perpendicular setup, and then we can make the triple bond that way, just like we did with N2. So that triple bond in carbon monoxide is one sigma bond, two pi bonds, all right? The last one is an ion, BF4 minus. BF4 minus, if you add up the electrons, it's 32. This is a lot like you would do for CH4. Lewis structure looks just like it would for CH4, except fluorines satisfy the octet rule. So we got lone pairs on all the fluorines. When you have four things connected and all four of them are atoms, you have the molecular geometry that is tetrahedral. Okay, so the shape forms a tetrahedron and the molecular geometry, we actually call it tetrahedral because all four of those uh, tetrahedral uh, endpoints are actual atoms. So there's nothing to cover with your thumbs. Remember, it's just tetrahedral. So boron has four effective pairs around it. Four effective pairs around boron is S, P1, P2, P3. See the four? S, P1, P2, P3. S, P3. So I'm actually calling the, uh, just gonna, for simplicity, I'm just gonna write the fluorine atoms as a sphere. But really, each of the fluorines is also S, P3, is it not? So really, the fluorines should also have four S, P3 lobes coming off of it. Uh, but boron is my central atom here. I've got my four sp3 orbitals drawn kind of as lobes. And I've got them in the tetrahedral, top, bottom right, and then coming out at you and going back, right? Now, just to make note and actually write it down here, for the fluorine atoms, they are also uh, sp3. So to keep it simple, I've abbreviated each fluorine atom as a sphere. But in actuality, each fluorine is sp3 hybridized, so it would look like the boron. It'd have, instead of the boron, it would be an F, and then you'd have other, the three, three other lobes coming out and holding the three lone pairs of each fluorine atom. Okay, so it can, that would be actually a pretty, that would take a while to draw that one, but they should actually be tetrahedral themselves. All right, that's it for this video. Um, all of my handwritten notes are available at chemistrynotes.com. Uh, I got general chemistry notes and organic chemistry notes, the full course for both. So uh, I'll see you for the next video. We're going to start, start to talk about, we're, we're done with the localized electron model. We're going to talk about the molecular orbital model. Okay.